Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Highlander News. Broadcasting live from the Highlands News Studio in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. I'm Ben Rosenstiel. And I'm Kat Vincent. We have a multitude of extracurricular activities here at Highlands, so you may not have had the chance to see what everyone has to offer. Elizabeth is starting a new series highlighting some clubs, and for the first installment, let's take a closer look at the mock trial team. After we had already won first place at the Yale Invitational at Yale University, um, we placed first place at the state Kentucky competition, and then we went to nationals, and we placed 13th nationally. We meet about twice a week now, um, officially, but then we also have individual meetings, attorney witness, to practice more. I'm an attorney, um, and so that means I'm on both sides of the case, so uh, prosecution and defense. And so I have two direct examinations, two cross-examinations, and then I do both pre-trials and I give a closing argument. I am an attorney role, which means we, we get a case, like a made-up case, and it could go basically either way, like a court case. And as an attorney, I had to memorize um, statements usually and questions and then ask my witness who is on my team and then cross-examine a witness who's on another team I want to be a lawyer uh, when I grow up, so this club is a really great opportunity to get insight into what life is like if you want to be a trial lawyer. Um, so it's really fun. You get to argue, um, you know, meet a bunch of different people and make a lot of really great friends. It really helps you learn to think on your feet and kind of think analytically um, and critically. Um, because there is an element of memorization to the club, but during the trial, there's also an element of, you know, the other team could object, you really don't know what's going to happen, so you have to come up with a solution um, that helps your side of the case. Thanks, Elizabeth. The team leaves for their regional competition this week, so we wish them the best of luck. Be sure to tune in for future installments, and next time we will be looking into We the People, an academic team. Due to many of the drivers' new year, uh, new, there are many new drivers in the new year, and so owning, owning a car is a huge responsibility. Even the best drivers can run into some roadblocks, but if you get a flat tire, Homer can show you how to fix it. This will be part of a three-part series in which we will show you how to maintain your car. Let's take a look. How to change your tire. Roll down to a level parking spot. The materials you will need will be a car jack, a rod for your car, a spare tire or donut, and a wrench. Find the spot on your car where the car jack goes. Loosen the bolts of the tire in a star pattern, but not all the way. Start jacking up the car until there's enough ground clearance to slip off the tire. Finish loosening up the bolts and slip off the tire. Grab the spare or donut tire and finger tighten the bolts. 
Lower the car onto the ground. Tighten the bolts in a star pattern to the point where you could not move them anymore. Put materials away. Drive away in patch tire either with a repair kit or taking it to a repair shop. Knowing how to change your tire is essential when driving on the road. Thanks Homer, I'll be sure to remember that. Puxatawney Phil just saw his shadow on Groundhog Day, so it looks like there'll be six more weeks of winter. However, winter sports are wrapping up and we are beginning the transition into spring sports imminently. What's happening, Jack? Thanks, Kat. Winter sports are beginning to wrap up. The boys basketball team is currently 12 and 13. They have a game tonight against Villa Madonna at 7.30, which is also many teams senior night. Next Wednesday, we next Wednesday, they have their first game of region play. They play at home against NCC. If they win, they will be able to advance to the district championship and then to the regional tournament at NKU. Good luck, boys, in the postseason. The girls' basketball team is 21-7. and seven. They have their final game of the regular season tomorrow at Beechwood at 6.30 at home. After that, their district play will begin. Junior Zoe Barth earned her 1,500th point this season and leads the team at 19.7 points per game. Keep up the great work, girls, in the postseason. The newly founded archery team is having an excellent season. Congratulations are in store for Adam Flodemersch, who scored a perfect flight. The team competed at regionals this past set Sunday and will be attending another tournament on the 24th. The dance team is continuing to compete at invitationals to prepare for their state and national tournament. On Sunday, they competed at the Oak Hills Invitational, where they won grand champs. They will be competing at the state tournament on the 24th. Shortly after, they will be flying down to Orlando to compete in nationals on March 1st. Good luck, girls, on your upcoming competition. The cheer team just got back from the national competition in Orlando, Florida. They placed 11th out of 41 teams in the nation at the Universal Cheerleading Association Championships. The team competed in the small varsity co-ed class that allows up to 20 individuals on the mat, including no more than four boys. This marks the first time in school history that this program has gone to UCA Nationals. Congratulations are in store for the team on an excellent performance. As for the bowling team, the girls team could not make it past the first round of, turn of the tournament in their fourth straight regional appearance. The Bluebirds bowled an 8-1-5 in their qualifying, qualifying round, earning the ninth seed before losing 3-1 to Lexington Bryan Station. Andy Campbell made school in Northern, Northern Kentucky history by bowling 1,107 total in five qualifying games. Freshman Abby Bach competed in the girls' singles championship. She did not make it to semifinals, bowling a 3-6-8 in three games. The Bluebird swimming team dominated regionals this year by winning their first regional title since 1994 and ending Covington Catholic's run of 19 straight region championships. The boys' team placed first and scored 508 points. The girls' team took fourth with 500, 252 points. The girls, boys and girls' team combined won their seventh straight region championship, scoring 760 points. Highland sophomore diver Finn Murphy placed runner-up in regionals, which advances him to the state competition. The top scorers for the boys' team includes Garrison Herfel, Mac Russell, Will Griffith, Jack Banks, Chaz Sand, Davis Guthier, and Brendan Conley. Caroline Sand broke school records in the girls' 100 and 200 free. Junior Olivia Hopper also broke a school record on the girls' side in the 100-yard backstrike. Congrats to all swimmers and divers who qualified for the state, and good luck at the state competition. Tryouts and workouts are beginning for many spring sports, including softball, tennis, baseball, and track and field. If you are interested in getting involved with the team, meet with Hascamp or a coach for more information. Back to you, Kat. Thanks, Jack. We wish the teams best of luck as they head into the winter season, uh, as the winter season comes to a close. By this point, many of you have heard that there is a movie being filmed right here in Fort Thomas. Sam and Kat got the chance to get an on set and an interview multiple members of the production. Over the course of a three-part series, they'll explore just what it takes to create a movie. I'm here at the location where they filmed the extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile movie shot right here in Fort Thomas, starring people like Zac Efron, Lily Collins, Joe Malkovich, and lots of other stars. Over the course of a three-part series, we're going to be taking a closer look into how they made this movie. Well, there's lights, camera, action, and then they got to shoot it somewhere. So. I usually find the somewheres. 
Um, sometimes it takes a while, like on this picture right here. It took us a long time to find things that look like they were in the 1970s. They're kind of gone now. So, you know, every so often they <laughs> pop up and then finding one that has like the perfect amount of space. And it's actually like, you know, where you can get a camera crew in. There's a lot more to it than just being pretty and looking like it. Um, basically our department is involved with the scouting and the securing and then the, the logistics of all the locations of the film. Um, we make sure that we have all the film, like the locations where, where we'll be filming, all the support spaces for catering, parking, um, trash removal, restrooms, and basically dealing with the public. I get a lot of phone calls all the time uh, because Kentucky has a tax credit, the film tax credit, and it's really important and they're thinking about cutting it so we're trying to get it, keep it on the books. But what it basically represents is a 30% tax credit, basically. So every dollar you spend in the state, the tax and the film commission will refund 30 cents on the dollar. You know, at a, at the end of the film, you know, depending on the size of the film, you can have tax credits ranging anywhere from $250,000 to $1.5 million. And that tax credit helps produce the next movie and bring more things into town. And there's a lot of movies being made here, so it's a good time to kind of, you know, get some good experience and be able to watch some cool movies get made. Thanks, Kat. It'll be really great to see our hometown up on the big screen. The second installment in the series is coming soon, and I can't wait to hear more about all the different jobs on the movie set. The Olympics are well underway, and one of our own Bluebirds actually participated in the Deaf Olympics. Sophomore Tyler Brown went to Turkey last year to participate for swimming. We are super proud of him, and Alex sat down with him so he could tell his story. Highlands, meet Tyler Brown. Sophomore, swimmer, Deaf Olympian, and sufferer of type 2 Usher syndrome. In about third grade, I noticed I needed glasses, and about two and a half years ago, uh, we were opted to take a blood test and they found out that I had type 2 ushers. Uh, type 2 usher syndrome essentially causes hearing loss at, that deteriorates over time and retinitis pigmentosa, which means that my retina uh, is essentially dying and de separating itself very rapidly. My vision will last until I'm 25 where I'll be completely blind by then. I don't hold it back, uh, I make jokes about it because I can and it's pretty horrible that I make the jokes but that's what makes it horrible and funny and mm. if you repress it it'll just get internalized and it'll come out eventually. Three years ago I swam in San Antonio uh, for the Deaf World Games and there were about 20 people on the team and I really enjoyed it. So then last year, uh, in July, I went to Samsung, Turkey to swim for the Deaf Olympics, and I was one of eight swimmers. And next January, I will be swimming in the Youth Deaf Olympics, where I won't be swimming against professional athletes, uh, and that will be in Buenos Aires. Because of my deteriorating vision, I have almost no peripheral vision, so it becomes more of a mental race rather than a social race. Well, I would like to continue swimming, obviously, and because of how much vision has deteriorated, uh, I will be able to participate in the Special Olympics, but that would be, depend on me having the time qualifications and a, there'd be an opening for me to participate I just want to try to succeed. We wish Tyler the best of luck in his next competition in January and find great inspiration in his story and his ability to rise above his own struggles to achieve something great. Thanks, Alex, and congratulations on your gold medal, Tyler. I wish you the best of luck in the future. In very recent news, many of you may have heard already about the tragedy in Parkland, Florida yesterday. Our thoughts go out to all the victims and those impacted at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. This is a time for grieving for the families and friends and everyone at the school, and we hope that some meaningful action can be taken. 
That's it for this edition of the Highlander News. I'm Ben Rosenstiel. And I'm Kat Finsett. Have an awesome four-day weekend, Highlands.